If you look at the back of your phone's charger, you'd see these two ratings on that. The input voltage range from 100 to 240 volts. That means when you plug your charger into the electricity socket, it's taking in voltage from 100 to 240 volts, most probably 220 volts. And what it is delivering as output to your phone is 5 volts. So how come the charger is getting 220 volts, but it's only providing 5 volts as output? And even more interesting is the fact that the electricity that is generated at a power station, the voltage there is close to 11,000 volts. But what we are getting in our houses is 220 volts. So that means there's a far greater step down of that voltage as it reaches to our houses. So the device that is actually converting that 11,000 volts to 220 volts is called an AC transformer, and that is our today's topic. We've looked at in electromagnetic induction topic and also in AC generator that if we have a bar magnet whose magnetic field lines can pass through a coil of wire, if the magnetic field lines passing through this coil of wire that we call magnetic flux changes, there is an EMF induced in this coil. So if the magnet is moved towards and away from the coil, there would be an EMF induced. And due to that induced EMF, there would be a current flowing through this closed loop. And that current passes through this lamp. And hence we can say that the EMF is induced as long as the magnetic flux is changing through the coil of wire. So here you have a, a DC battery or so, and we have a, a small coil through which a current is passing. So due to this current passing through the coil, there is magnetic field around this coil and that magnetic field resembles the magnetic field of a bar magnet. Now, if you place another coil of wire near this first coil, now let's look at that situation. Now, here we have another coil of wire that is placed right next to this first coil. And you can see if this first coil is brought near this second bigger coil, there is an EMF induced, but that is only for a moment. And then the EMF induced just stops. So that answers our first question. Why can't transformers work on DC voltage? So if you have two coils of wire like this, one having more number of turns than the other one, and a DC voltage source is applied across the first coil that we call the primary coil, and a load is connected across the secondary coil, you'd see that when the DC current is passing through the primary coil, there is a magnetic field around that coil of wire, but since the current is constant, so that means the magnetic field changes initially, but then becomes constant. So the flux passing through the secondary coil is not changing. So that means as this DC power supply, this DC voltage source is turned on, there is a change of flux through the secondary coil and that induces an EMF but that is just momentarily. After that, since the flux does not change, the EMF is not induced. So instead of a, a DC voltage source, if you have the same two coils of wire, and now instead of a DC source, there's an AC source connected. There would be an AC current that flows through the primary coil, and that current changes its direction as well as its magnitude. So that means there would be a constantly varying magnetic field or magnetic flux that passes through the secondary coil. And what that means is there is an EMF induced in the secondary coil and the EMF induced is a varying EMF, just like the AC source at the primary coil. But another important thing to look here is that some of the flux is passing through the secondary coil, but a large majority of the magnetic flux is actually not passing through the secondary coil. It's, it's kind of wasted flux. So that means the EMF is induced in the secondary coil. There is mutual induction, but it's not so efficient. So in order to have a more efficient energy transmission, in order to have more efficient 
rate of change of flux across the secondary coil and hence the EMF induced across the secondary coil. The transformer actually is first bound around this kind of a core, a central core that is made up of steel usually. And one coil is bound around one side of this iron core and this is called the primary coil. And the other one is bound around the secondary coil. And again, an AC voltage source is applied across the primary coil. And hence, an AC current begins to flow through the primary coil, and that current is changing its direction. But now you could see the magnetic flux is being concentrated towards the secondary coil through this iron core. So the iron core concentrates almost all of the magnetic flux through this secondary coil, and hence, the, the flux changes through the secondary coil and hence there is an EMF induced in the coil and uh, the load resistance then gets the induced current flowing through it. So this is a more efficient way of transmitting the energy from the primary coil to the secondary coil. That also answers our next question. That what is the function of the iron or steel core in a transformer? So. This iron core or steel core concentrates the magnetic flux towards the secondary coil. And that means that the power that is transmitted from the primary coil towards the secondary coil passes through this core and hence is transmitted through the core towards the secondary coil more efficiently. Now let's have a look at the two types of transformers that we come across. First one is a step down transformer and now Coming back to our, the question that we posed right at the start of the video, that our mobile phone charger that is actually giving an output of 5 volts to our mobile phone's battery is taking in 220 volts. So how is it taking in 220 volts and delivering only 5 volts? So there is a step down transformer that is attached to this. So this is a, a typical step down transformer. You could see it has a primary coil here and a secondary coil. And clearly the number of turns in the primary coil is greater than the number of turns in the secondary coil. And in fact, in this situation, there is a ratio of three to one for the number of, t number of turns across the primary to the number of turns acro across the secondary coil. And again, an AC voltage source is applied across the primary and an AC voltage is induced across the secondary coil, but that voltage that is induced across the secondary is much smaller as compared to the AC voltage across the primary. So it's stepping down the voltage. Now the second type of transformer would be a step up transformer. And now here you could see the number of turns across the primary coil is much smaller as compared to the number of turns across the secondary coil. In fact, now the ratio of turns of the primary coil to the secondary coil is one to four. So you could see there's a smaller voltage across the primary coil and there's a much larger voltage across the secondary coil. But remember, it's not like this transformer is producing additional volts across this secondary coil. It would be against the law of conservation of energy. It cannot take less energy and deliver more energy across the secondary coil. The power that we've given across the primary coil, the power, electrical power, is given by the equation voltage times current. And the power delivered across the primary coil is voltage times current. And the power transmitted across the secondary coil would still be voltage times current. So what the transformer is doing really is it's stepping up the voltage across the secondary coil by reducing the current across the secondary coil. So it's increasing one of the two variables, but decreasing the other one. And you could also see for a step down transformer when the number of turns across the primary coil is greater than the number of turns across the secondary coil, the voltage across the primary coil is larger and the voltage across the secondary coil is smaller. If you look at the current, the current across the primary coil is smaller, but the current across the secondary coil is larger. Hence, when you find the product of the voltage and the current, the same power is delivered from the primary towards the secondary coil. So this was the construction and working of an AC transformer. A transformer works on the principle of electromagnetic induction. If you're interested in knowing 
in more detail about electromagnetic induction, you can click on the video that is coming up on your screen. See you in that video.